Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. Why the Prime Minister says the FNM is an incredibly unreliable choice. The leader of the Democratic National Alliance slams recent poll results. That story's coming up straight ahead. Leader of Opposition Business in the Senate, Monty Gomez, defends Loretta Butler Turner. That story straight ahead. One million dollars worth of cocaine seized in Abaco. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, at his first public political meeting since an offensive finger gesture landed him in hot water, Prime Minister Perry Christie stuck to the script last night and shifted his focus to the free national movement. While addressing PLP supporters during the party's joint outdoor branch meeting, Christie pointed to the division within the opposition, calling the FNM an incredibly unreliable choice. Kyle Joaquin reports. Y'all look like you're having a good time here tonight. That's the way it should be. It was back to the task at hand for Prime Minister Christie last night. Just days after his middle finger sparked controversy, Christie highlighted the division within the opposition, advising voters not to place the country in the hands of the FNM. The point is you have all the evidence you need to know that they are incredibly unreliable and that you cannot make the mistake of relying on them to be able to form a government. He was addressing PLP supporters from Southern Shores, Carmichael and Golden Isles during a joint outdoor branch meeting. Christie said pretty soon, Bahamans will have a decision to make, one he thinks will be fairly easy. Must decide on whether or not a combination of men and women who have demonstrated this incredible facility to fight each other to say bad things about each other, to say damning things about each other, to call each other names that go to the root of their existence. How could they possibly be seen to be capable of forming a government and having continuity and governance in a country like the Bahamas? The devil is a liar. Focus of the night seemed to be on FNM leader, Dr. Hubert Minnis, with speaker after speaker delivering one jab after another. Minister Clean So, Minister Clean So, get fish from Tugi and Bobo. Can you all imagine this man who can barely struggle his way to the end of a sentence representing the Bahamas in important negotiations? Or can you imagine him on the regional or international stage? Huh? Uh, could you? Southern Shores MP Ken Dorsett and Golden Isles MP Michael Alkidis sought to drive home why they are the best choice. They are not fit, PLPs. It's very simple. That scrap gang on the other side is not fit, and they do not deserve to govern this Bahamas. And it's up to us to make sure that they are out and that they stay out. The FNM is broken. They are not ready to lead this country. The PLP is united and the PLP is strong. The PLP has a team, a united team, that is on the job tackling the big issues facing our country. So if you think it's bad now, you don't support these men. We cannot afford for no opposition to take over this country. Vote PLP. Support these men. Let us build this country. The time is too risky. Let us be proud, be bold, be PLP, and let us take this country to the next level. The PLP is expected to hold another joint outdoor branch meeting on Monday night. Reporting for our news, I'm Kyle Walking. Well, on the heels of Branville McCartney's resignation from the Senate, Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller says the DNA leader was wrong to trust opposition leader Loretta Butler Turner in the first place. Addressing PLP supporters at last night's outdoor branch meeting, Miller said McCartney's decision to quit the Senate took longer than he expected. He said he can't tolerate her no more. But if he had a brain in his head, he wouldn't have gone there to begin with. He joined the woman just to have publicity and to have little strength for about two months. McCartney's relationship with Butler Turner fell apart after she accused him of throwing her under the bus. However, Miller says he doesn't know how McCartney let Butler Turner sweep him into the web of confusion that she created. He realized that all she was was a bag of hot air. 
no substance. Yet he better need joined her, realizing that she had no future. Today he decided, I better get off this train. So he has now made his exit from the halls of the Senate. The Tall Pines MP told supporters now is not the time to put the country in the hands of an opposition that just can't seem to get it together. Now you all have a choice, you know. You can vote for the other fellas who got no stability. You can vote for the gatekeepers who got trouble to keep the theft. Okay? You can vote for the FNM that put an onerous burden on the backs of the Bahamian people. The roadworks alone exceeded $100 million. You want to vote for them, you got a choice. But I believe that any sensible Bahamian appreciating from when we have bought this country over the last four and a half years, if you want to be honest with yourself, you will vote for the PLP in the upcoming general elections. Well, the FNM candidate for Golden Isles has withdrawn his candidacy. According to a statement issued by Golden Isles candidate Kenyatta Gibson, he advised party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis that due to professional and business obligations, he has decided to withdraw as a candidate for the Free National Movement in the Golden Isles constituency. Gibson writes, I am thankful for the opportunity given to serve and I offer best wishes and my continued support to Dr. Minnis and the Free National Movement. Well, DNA leader Branville McCartney hit back at FNM leader Dr. Hubert Minnis, who told FNM supporters last night that a vote for the DNA is a vote for the PLP. The former senator also dismissed PLP and DNA predictions that the third party will not secure any seats in the upcoming election. McCartney says the DNA will be conducting its own poll to ensure voters know the truth. Here's Giorgio Bain. Leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Brian Phil McCartney, says a poll that predicts zero wins for his party in the upcoming general election are totally false. A PLP source said that early predictions showed that the party having 14 sure seats, 11 for the Free National Movement, and 14 seats considered to be a toss-up. Meantime, the FNM predicted 26 seats with the PLP winning eight and the remaining seats being a toss-up. None of the major parties predicted seats going to the DNA or any other political parties. This is not sitting well with DNA leader Branville McCartney. Nothing changes, no matter whether the FNM or the PLP would get in power. And the same people benefit. So, as they said last election, uh, when the former leader of the PL FNM said, if he couldn't have it, the PLP will have it. Well, they're on that same, and having that same type of talk now. Well, I think the Bahamian people are going to show them completely different. Um, the PLP and the FNM, they are two sides of the same coin, and they would want, if the FNM can't win, they would want the PLP to win, and vice versa. That is what that is all about. McCartney says if the predictions ahead of the United States presidential election are any example of how spot on these polls are, it's obvious that his party stands a much better chance than predicted. We saw what polls said and did in the United States of America and the outcome there. So I don't rely on those polls that was given by the um, PLP. Uh, the PLP said many things too. The PLP said that we were going to have a better economy. That didn't happen. The PLP said that we're going to have a safe country. That didn't happen. Um, uh, the Prime Minister said in the last election campaign that he was going to be the bridge to the future. Well, that didn't happen. Why should I believe um, what they're saying now about any polls, anything else for that matter? McCartney says his party has conducted its own polls and plans to make them public very soon. We continue and um, we are very confident that the Bahamian people want change. As a matter of fact, we're very confident and in particular on the ground that Bahamian people don't want to vote for the PLP or the FNM. They want them out. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie Bain. Meanwhile, the woman set to replace McCartney as leader of opposition business in the Senate is defending Loretta Butler-Turner. Senator Monique Gomez says despite the flack the opposition leader has gotten in recent weeks, she firmly believes in her vision of uniting opposition forces. Jasmine Brown tells us more. Gomez declared her loyalty to Butler Turner, insisting the Long Island MP is not the egomaniac her political opponents are trying to portray. You can't blame it on Loretta Butler Turner. Um, Loretta Butler Turner does what she can 
for all Bahamians. Gomez was chosen to replace McCartney hours after his resignation was made public. McCartney was offered the post less than three months ago by Butler Turner, who became leader of the official opposition after she and six other FNM MPs ousted Dr. Hubert Minnis. McCartney told the media on Thursday that his association with Butler Turner was harming the DNA's brand. You cannot blame her if Mr. McCartney has decided that he, you, we don't know what pressure he's under. Because his party may tell him, look here, we need to concentrate on winning this election. And so you need to get out of the Senate. The decision to replace McCartney with Gomez was supported by outspoken talk show host and opposition Senator Rodney Monker. I knew then he was the wrong choice. Who do you think now should be his successor? I think decent Monique Gomez. As she embraces her new role, Gomez says she still would like to see unity among the opposition forces. I am hoping that eventually we can all work together because this country is the only country that I know, um, the only country that I ever intend to live in, and I want to see what's best for the Bahamas and for Bahamians as a whole because there are a lot of things that we as Bahamians need to do to ensure that the country is left for our children, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. So hopefully we can put our forces together and work to oust the present administration. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. In other news, Drug Enforcement Unit officers seized more than $1 million worth of cocaine last night during a major drug bust in Abaco, which resulted in the arrest of seven Haitian nationals. Fonik Toot reports. Sirens blaring, a police boat raced to the Marine base last night, carrying seven Haitian nationals found on board a 90-foot freighter containing $1.1 million worth of suspected cocaine. Commander of the Drug Enforcement Unit, Chief Superintendent Samuel Butler says officers busted the men in Abaco during the early morning hours, following 24 hours of surveillance, which led them from the southern to northern Bahamas. As police intercepted the suspect began to eject a number of packages into the water those packages were collected they were examined and we determined them to be cocaine Back in New Providence, officers offloaded and stacked the blocks of drugs which weighed in at 219 pounds Further examination revealed that it was some 77 packages weighing some 219 pounds. We estimate the street value of the cocaine at $1.1 million. A few feet away from the drugs, the seven suspects sat feet crossed and hands cuffed. As for the vessel they were caught on, Butler says it's not their first encounter with the freighter. That particular vessel is known to the police come to our attention on several occasions and it is a freighter that commute between uh, Haiti uh, uh, through Inagua and to the northern Bahamas uh, and so we're pleased that our intelligence was on point at this time. Butler says their intelligence has revealed increased activity between Haiti and South American countries. There's a great network uh, where we suspect that cocaine will continue to be stockpiled and uh, continue to make its transit down through the chain and on to United States of America. The DEU chief says he expects the men to be charged in the magistrate's court shortly, but he says it would not have happened without a great partnership between drug enforcement officers and police in Abaco. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonnie Toot. Still to come on our news, meet the latest batch of DNA candidates, plus why an FNM candidate says the prime minister is done. That's coming up when our news returns.